Are you going to do some filming with your camera? Cheers! You can show everyone your camera. <laughs> oh, come back here. All right. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit down? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm okay. You guys, we are here. We are back. We are going to attempt today to film maybe Emily's induction birth story vlog thing we're gonna see how we go if you hear noises in the background Jakey's here with me today so to start off with today let's chat birth plans so this time around I actually did have a birth plan um, I have had birth plans in the past but if you guys are familiar with our story we've had two premature births and a stillbirth so as much as I wanted things to go to plan obviously with Jackson it was slightly different we knew that he was going to be born sleeping essentially we got the birth that we wanted it was very peaceful it was very beautiful in its own way it was very sad and tragic um, I'm not going to talk too much about it because otherwise I'll cry. But in terms of Jake and Sam's births, both of them came preterm. So Sam was born at 32 weeks and Jake was born at 36 weeks. So essentially my birth plan was get the babies out safely um, and just do what you got to do. I didn't get to have barely any skin on skin time and both of those babies were taken to the NICU straight after birth. So definitely not my ideal birth plan um, this time around. Being full term, I did write down a birth plan. Honestly, I didn't think that I would actually get what I wanted. Um, basically, I said here, yeah, I want to try and avoid having an epidural. Yep, no, no time for an epidural. So I didn't get one of those. Um, my plan was to be able to walk around the room and bounce on a ball and do all the things. Uh, yeah, there was barely any time for that either. Um, I said here that I wanted minimal intervention, absolutely no forceps suction or anything like that. And I prefer not to have the cord in her scalp this time and definitely no mirror. That's just something that I don't really need to see ever again in my life. Um, so I said that I didn't want a mirror. I said here that I do not want a C-section unless it's life or death. I said that I really wanted delayed cord clamping this time um, because last time I felt like everything was so rushed and I would like uninterrupted skin on skin time. Those things I actually did get this time around, which I'll explain later. It was amazing, you guys. I, mm, I was so happy. And the other thing that I wrote on here was please don't remove her from my chest until she is unlatched and I'm ready. I'd like at least 30 minutes. You guys, I got two hours with her. Two hours of uninterrupted, just oh, cuddles. It was the most amazing thing ever, especially after how hard I worked. And then lastly, I wrote that I plan to exclusively breastfeed this time. So if she's required to go to special care or NICU, um, I'd like to discuss formula options before she's given any, um, if that is needed. So that was kind of my birth plan this time round. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear her or not, she's grunting. Now that I've talked to you guys about my birth plan, let's just jump on into the induction day. So the plan was that we were supposed to arrive at the hospital about 3.30 in the afternoon. Unfortunately, our hospital was bedlocked. So I did get a call around lunchtime and that pushed that out, which kind of just threw me off for the day. I don't know how else to explain it, but I kind of had this scenario playing out in my head that, okay, I'm going to go in at this time and this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And, you know, we're going to go through all these hoops and I'm probably going to come home or maybe I'll stay there. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but it just didn't happen that way. We ended up going in at around 6.30 at night and you guys are going to see hear me saying goodbye to the boys. Honestly, I love these little moments that I had and I just want to include them into the video because I think it's so special um, and I just, yeah, I want to look back on them. So this is me saying goodbye to the boys just before we left to go and be induced. Today is the day. It is induction day. I am so nervous. Um, I haven't been sleeping very well. I honestly didn't think that I would ever get here. Who would have thought that I would need to be induced? Um, but it is induction day. Everything is packed, repacked, repacked again, <laughs> ready to go. Um, Granddad is on his way up right now as we speak to watch the boys tonight. Um, Oh, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I feel so puffy. Look how puffy I look. Oh my gosh. Okay. Get it together, Tammy. It's going to be fine. We're going to go in. We're going to see how it goes and hope for the best.
it is a good day to have a baby. I need to pee already. I think we need to find toilets before we even get up to the water. <laughs> I literally peed just before we left the house as well. <laughs> I swear, every time I stand up, I just, I need to pee straight away. Okay. That is one thing I will say that I'm very excited about not having to do after baby's born. This time getting to the hospital was so different to any birth that I've ever experienced. Instead of going to women's assessment, which is basically the emergency department, I went straight up to labor and delivery and filled in all the forms and did all the paperwork and then they took me into my room. Um, as we were walking down the hallway to get to the room, it was pretty clear which room we were going to get and it was the room that I gave birth to Jackson in. Um, honestly, I loved that I was in there. I loved being back in there. It kind of, it made me feel closer to him. I, it was almost like he was there with us, watching over us and just keeping us safe. And as bittersweet as it was, it just felt nice to be close to him again. It just, it felt like home, if that makes sense. Once we got into the room, everything happened pretty quickly. I had my midwife come in. She discussed what was basically going to happen. She was going to check to see if I was dilated or not. I was already two centimeters dilated. My cervix was pretty high at that point though and right at the back. So um, they essentially just left it at that overnight. I ended up staying at the hospital. Matt and I had dinner together, which was something that we did when Jackson was born. It was kind of nice. Again, like I said, it just, it made it feel like home. Matt went out and got some dinner and we just had a little mini date in the hospital. Okay, we are here. I don't know if you guys remember this room. Um, I'm actually in the same room that I had Jackson in, which in some ways is good, in some ways not so good, but I'm trying to choose to find the good in it. It feels really calm and really quiet. I'm down a quiet end of the hospital. Um, down here so that's good and also it's a really small room which means baby won't be too far away from me once she's born um, I've had my assessment they've done all the checks they've checked out baby she's doing great um, surprisingly I was already two centimeters dilated so that is good um, I actually came in expecting to have zero dilation I don't know why I felt that way I just felt that way um, and expecting to have the Foley balloon in overnight but I've been able to avoid that, which is really great. Um, if it was the morning, they would have already broken my water, but they're not going to do that tonight. They're going to wait until tomorrow morning to do it. So I had the option of going home tonight. I chose to stay um, purely just so I could have a good night's sleep without being interrupted a million times by Jake. Um, and also, now that they've like messed around with things, like I'm here, I'm a bit crampy, so it's kind of a good place to be. Um, but yeah, they're going to come in tomorrow morning uh, at around 7, 7.30. If I haven't already broken my waters, they're going to break my waters for me. And tomorrow is going to be the day the baby girl is going to make her appearance. But I'm excited. I'm nervous. I feel really calm though, which is crazy because for the last few days, I've just been feeling super stressed out about the whole thing, wondering how it's all going to go. And honestly... I feel like everything's going to be perfect. I feel like this is going to be the greatest birth that I've ever had. And I'm just, I'm so excited about it. I just, mm, I can't wait until tomorrow. Um, but for now, I am gonna put the camera down. I'm gonna try and get a good night's sleep. Um, Matt has gone home to sleep with the boys and he is on standby in case I do go into labor in the middle of the night. But I don't know, I just, I feel really good. I feel really good that they're gonna have their dad at home tonight. My belly oh, is very tight. I'm um, just pacing around the room right now because it's a little bit uncomfortable to be sitting down. Um, but yeah, that's where we're up to right now. I'm super excited. I can't wait to meet her. I feel like for the last few days I've been in this limbo of not wanting her to come because I don't want it to be over. I'm not ready for my baby rearing days to be over. Like I don't have that done feeling, if that makes sense. Um, but at the same time, I'm feeling more and more content with the fact that tomorrow, sometime tomorrow, she's going to be out and it's going to be wonderful. So that's the update for tonight. I will keep you guys posted and I will chat to you in the morning. After dinner, the midwife came back in. I think she realized that it was the room that I'd given birth to Jackson in and she asked if I wanted to move. I told her it wasn't really necessary, that I was really happy to be back in that room. 
Um, like I said, it was bittersweet. And at the end of the day, I think it would have been really nice to give birth to Emily in that room. However, another mum was going through something similar to what we went through and needed that room. It was down the quiet um, end of the labour and delivery ward. So I completely understood that and I was more than happy to move. This, by the way, all happened after Matt had gone home for the night. So um, I ended up getting moved to a different room. I had a bath. I sent Matt some messages saying how great it was. I was going to get to have a bath. I got really excited, you guys. <laughs> anyway, once we got to the new room, the sleeping tablet kicked in and I honestly just passed out. So I didn't end up getting to film the room for you or giving you a room tour or anything like that because I was just so tired. So the next morning I woke up in my new room with my bathtub and it was all great. By the time that Matt got into the hospital, we had a changeover in stuff and it actually turned out to be for the best. I had, hands down, the best midwife I've ever had in my life. The one the night before, Amy, she was amazing. She was so, so sweet. She actually came back and met baby Emily um, after she was born. It was so nice to see her again. But my midwife, Nicole, holy moly, Nicole, if you ever watch this video, you are an angel sent from above like you were so amazing and I totally couldn't have done it without you um you were born to be a midwife by this time it was almost eight o'clock Nicole walked into the room and she was chatting to me about my birth plan we'd been over it the night before with Amy um but obviously we had to go through it again because it was a new midwife and Nicole like I said was absolutely amazing we chatted through everything all the options all the options for pain relief she knew exactly where I stood this is something I might add that has never happened before. I've never gotten to tell a midwife kind of what I wanted out of the experience. Um, so it was really, really nice to have that this time around. After we chatted about all the options, we broke my water. It happened just after eight o'clock in the morning and pretty much straight away, I started having contractions. Within about the first 15 minutes after she broke my water, I had probably around three contractions. They were about five minutes apart. They weren't overly bad, they weren't nice, but they definitely weren't at the I need help kind of level. Um, so I decided to get out of the bed at that point and go and have a shower. Once I got into the shower, I had another three contractions within the 10 minutes I was in there. So things were starting to speed up. I honestly didn't think that they would speed up as quickly as they did. I wouldn't say they were getting worse in terms of the pain level, but they were definitely getting closer together and they were longer. Straight after the shower though, I did decide to put on some makeup. Honestly, I thought that I would have all the time in the world to get some makeup on and for Matt to go out to the car and get the baby's bags out and to set up the cameras and do all the things, but it just didn't happen that way. As soon as I had put my makeup on and put a shirt on, um, the contractions basically came hard and fast. They were pretty much back to back. They were getting a lot more painful. It literally ramped up from zero to 10 in like five minutes. I remember walking out of the bathroom over to the table and just begging Nicole for an epidural. Um, and I remember her saying, are you sure? Because you said you really didn't want one. There are other options. And I'm like, no, nope, I'm pretty sure I can't do this. This is so painful. I don't remember it being this painful. Um, I just honestly couldn't believe that the contractions were coming this hard and fast and I remember thinking to myself there is just no way I can do this for hours and hours and hours. I absolutely need an epidural. So after asking for the epidural I saw the ball. They would gotten the ball out for me given that that was part of my birth plan. They had literally thought of everything. Like I said they were so amazing. Um, so I walked over and went to sit down on the ball and holy moly the pain from the pressure was intense. Um, I couldn't sit on the ball so that was out. I'm like, okay, that's out, you know, let's do something else. So I was leaning over the bed and um, I remember the student midwife was trying to get the monitor on my belly to hear Emily's heartbeat and she just couldn't get it and it was bothering me so much having somebody touch me. And I know that in my birth plan I said that I didn't want the cord attached to her head um, but in the end, I'm just like, just attach it. I don't care. Like just attach it. I just, I can't have anyone touch me right now. <laughs> I was probably the biggest bitch while I was in labor, by the way. So I managed to get up on the bed and we got that attached. Honestly, that was excruciating. Laying on my back in labor, um, 
it was so so painful I don't know how I've done it in the past um, by the time we got the little clip on her head the contractions were back to back and I mean super painful there was a painful contraction and then there was a pushing contraction and there was painful contraction and pushing contraction there was no gap in them at all no time to get the camera out i managed to turn around and get on all fours and they got my top off i remember that um because the anesthetist was coming in to do the epidural by this point i was shaking you guys absolutely shaking i could not sit still as much as i said that i could sit still i could not sit still this was all within that first hour after they had broke my water so before nine o'clock the anesthetist got there and she walked into the room and introduced herself. She was absolutely lovely as well. I do not remember her name at this point. I was just in a world of pain. Um, and they were trying to tell me what was going to happen next and how it was going to happen. And when she took one look at me, it was already too late. We just, there was no time. Um, I was already pushing and there was no way that I was going to be able to sit still. So we ended up managing to get me up on all fours on the back of the bed. I don't know if this is gonna make much sense to you, but basically I was butt naked on all fours. I had my arms on the back of the bed. I remember biting on the bed and also they tried to give me gas. I wasn't actually able to breathe it in. I feel like they were trying to explain to me how to, but I was literally just biting down on the thing with my mouth open, um, either that or the bed for the pain. Um, so I was literally just sitting there um, on my knees, my arms over the edge of the bed, and I was focused on something. And Matt just said to me, look in your eyes. <laughs> like, you were looking at something so intensely. He had no idea what I was looking at. But when people were talking to me, I remember hearing what everyone in the room was saying, but I couldn't answer anybody. Um, I was just trying to focus on what I had to do. My body knew what I had to do, and I was just insanely focused at that point um i think from memory i was looking at the brand of the bed on the base um and i was just i'd picked a spot that's what i was focusing on there was one point as well just before she was born where matt said um babe your knee's gonna fall off the bed you need to move your knee and i remember turning around to him and saying shut up <laughs> he's just like wow um, it was so intense. Um, but other than that, I don't think I actually said anything to anybody. I was literally left to my own devices. So like I said earlier, when I read out my birth plan, um, my main goal was to have a pretty unassisted medication free birth. And as much as <laughs> I regretted it at the time, I pretty much got my wish. Um, she came so so fast she was here at 9 34 in the morning so between them breaking my water just after 8 and 9 30 in the morning like things just went from zero to extreme in such a short period of time i believe nicole caught emily honestly i was in such a trance at that point that it took a good few minutes for me to be able to just relax enough to even look at her, let alone turn around and pick her up and hold her. Well done, Mama. Mm -hmm. Well done. Mm -hmm. You did it. Yeah, you did it. Happened so fast. Naturally, no epidural. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I'm so proud of you. Mm. Look at our little girl. She's I can't believe that she's a girl literally want to cry i have cried almost every day with how just beautiful and perfect it was um it was basically everything that i had wanted and dreamed for all of my births and i finally got it with her and it was just amazing i had the best support network that i could have possibly had in both matt and nicole and also the student midwife amy that was in the room as well um the anesthetist everybody just they made me feel so validated and so respected. I just, there was no judgment in the room. Honestly, I was butt naked on all fours and I may or may not have pooped. I felt it. I know that I did. It's, it is what it is. It happens. Um, but honestly, it was just the most beautiful process. I will forever be so, so grateful for that team of people that loved me enough to give me that experience. As far as post-birth goes, I only got a one degree tear which didn't require stitches, which was great. I had a slight graze, but nothing 
that needed any care. Um, the whole placenta came out. Matt got a couple of photos of that. I'll put them here on the screen in case you want to see them. Um, I feel like that is such an incredible thing as a woman to be able to not only grow a human, but grow a whole organ that supports that human every time you get pregnant. It's, it's insane. It's incredible. Um, and I feel like it needs its place right here. <laughs> so I did want to share that with you. During the skin on skin time, Matt did dash down to the car and grab her bag. Um, and when he got back, he was able to put her first nappy on and they weighed her and did all the bits and pieces and got her dressed. And it was just, <sighs> you guys, after three pretty traumatic births, it was everything that I could have dreamed of. We ended up staying in the labor and delivery room for a good few hours after she was born. Um, like I said earlier, our hospital was bedlocked. They weren't just bedlocked in labor and delivery, they were in postnatal as well. Um, and then once we got to go down to the room, I was able to walk down there, which was really nice. I got a private room, which again, I didn't even get time to film a tour of for you guys. Um, everything happened so fast. By the time we got down to the room, it was probably 3 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Matt pretty much came home and relieved Matt's dad of babysitting duties, got the kids some dinner. While the boys were all eating their dinner, my dinner arrived as well. So I got to refuel and recharge, and then the boys came in to visit Emily for the first time. Honestly, they were so cute <laughs> in their little clothes. I just couldn't get over how cute they all were together. Hello! Baby girl! Baby girl! Do you want to see her? Do you want to meet her? Yeah? Yeah? Baby girl? We got her first try, but she hasn't really cried much today. Oh, so. Tracing from your brothers? Oh, oh, Jakey wants to see this one. Where are you going now? <gasps> oh, my Look at this. Bye bye bye. Bye. You're very first thing to do. Bye bye bye. Bye bye bye. Look at that. I don't think the boys are really interested. No, no, no. I think they're interested in their cars. They're interested in their cars. The boys didn't stay very long though. They only stayed for about 25 minutes, half an hour. Honestly, they were just too tired and too excited. And it was a very long day. I was very tired. So they left shortly after and I pretty much just crashed out between nursing and admiring and just soaking her in and trying to get some rest. The night went so fast. I had actually planned to stay there two nights. That was what I was hoping for. Given how relatively easy the birth was and how well I was recovering, there wasn't really a need for me to be at the hospital any longer than that. So I did end up getting discharged um, around lunchtime. So I was only in hospital for just over 24 hours after she was born. Again, that was a new thing for me. I've always stayed in for multiple days. You guys would have seen in my What's in My Hospital Bag video that I packed a lot of stuff for entertainment and for clothing in case we had to be there for a few days because that's typically what I've done in the past. Good morning. It is home day. This little miss has some hiccups. Um, our hospital is currently bedlocked at the moment, so I had anticipated going home a lot later today, but we are changing our plans and that is okay. She is doing absolutely amazing. I'll update you guys a lot more once we get home. Um, but she's feeding well, she's sleeping well, she's got the hiccups right now. Oh my god, she's so cute. I just, you guys, I love her so much. Do you want to say good morning? Good morning. Good morning, you're so awake. So I'm just waiting for Matt to arrive. He should be here in the next half an hour or so. And then we're going to go home. And I don't know, maybe I might even head out with Matt and Emily this afternoon and Jake to pick Sam up from school. I think that he'll be really surprised at that. I am feeling absolutely wonderful though. The healing is going so well. So there is literally no point in me being here other than the fact that it's quiet and 
there's no other kids jumping on us but it will be nice to get home i can't wait to see the boys and just settle back in and oh my goodness look at this she has a headband on oh my gosh okay i'm gonna stop rambling we're gonna pack up and get ready for that we'll get ready for your dad so the next lot of footage that you guys will see is of us bringing baby Emily home. Like I said, I barely got any footage in the hospital at all. Honestly, there was just no time between having her and moving rooms and nursing and getting to know her and just staring at her and also trying to sleep and recover. Um, I was just in this trance the entire time. And to be honest, I feel like I've been that way in the entire month that she's been home. I feel like I haven't been able to catch my breath. I'm so in awe of her and in awe of what I was able to do, um, my body, what my body was capable of in giving birth to her. At the same time, I just feel like the hours are turning into days and days are turning into weeks and everything is just happening so fast. And I feel like I haven't had a whole lot of time to catch my breath and just <sighs> breathe. to go home? Should we go home? Yeah. Let's go home, hey. Ready to take her home? Yeah? You excited to take her home? Uh, baby, girl. baby girl, we're gonna take her home with us? Yeah? We talked about it before we came to get you that he was going to show her her room. you guys enjoyed seeing the little bits and pieces that I was able to capture like I said everything happened so so fast I wasn't able to pick up the camera and part of me is super bummed about it but also you guys would never have seen that footage anyway because like I said I was butt naked on all fours on the bed so it was such a beautiful birth I'm so so thankful again for the team that I had surrounding me um, I can't believe how it happened. Everything just seemed to go so, so fast. I feel like, again, the hours are turning into days, days are turning into weeks, and she's already a month old, and I just, I can't believe it. I just wish time would stand still for just a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you guys in our next video.